Hi, it's JJ DiGeronimo, the president of Tech Savvy Women, and this is part of our Women in STEM video series. I'm excited to introduce a fabulous woman in STEM, Karen Sands. Hi, Karen. How are you today? Hi, JJ. I'm great. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's such an honor and really just awesome to share so many different journeys in STEM. So let's get started. How did you actually get started in uh, the STEM field? Well, I earned my bachelor's in math uh, a few years ago. And uh, I the way I got into math actually was that I just enjoyed math in elementary school, I think, because they had us race each other in doing math problems. And I was a, a competitive person and an athlete. And so that really met me where I really had fun. So I enjoyed math through school, got my degree in math, and um, there was nobody telling me trying to convince me to be in anything else. In fact, the the only thing somebody tried to influence me on was to get into the computer field uh, to get a degree in computer science, but I didn't. I got it in math instead with a minor in music. Oh, what an excellent combination. So how did you jump from a degree? Did you get an internship in math or did you go right into the field or did you, what did you do with the math degree? Good question. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the math degree, to be honest with you. I, I, I had considered becoming a lawyer, going to law school. I ended up deciding not to do that. I ended up going into sort of an engineering kind of role uh, for a, a telecommunications company at the time. And I found that after about eight months of that, I felt that my brain was going dead. It was just turning to mush. And and I thought, okay, I can't do this. I've spent a lot of my time and energy really uh, working hard in high school and college to earn this degree and to discipline my mind uh, and to train it analytically. And my brain's turning to mush. So I started looking for different you know, open positions, and I saw an ad for something called a systems engineer. And it was for a computer vendor who's no longer around. But when I read that, it was something that was a whole lot more exciting than anything that I could think about in math or computer science. I had avoided, as I said, the computer field because I thought it would be dreadfully boring. But when I read this ad, it talked about uh, installing software and configuring it uh, um, at customer sites and training customers. And oh, by the way, I found out later that your training would be in California. Well, for this originally Missouri girl who had at that time never really traveled to any extent, that sounded like a prize job and that was many years ago but uh, I've been in the computer field ever since and I'm so glad that I got into it but it certainly wasn't an obvious choice for me. So you know for many young girls watching these videos you know it's a lot of folks they get your degree get your first job you did all of those things you got a, a job in a field that you actually obtained a degree which is awesome but you recognized in that first job that it wasn't really aligning with your best self and probably things that you do naturally well. So for some of those young girls, how hard was it to jump out of that first job and what kind of advice can you give women uh, that may be in a job that they're not really loving? Good question. Well, the first thing is to identify that and identify why you're not loving it. Certainly, if you're not loving it because you'd rather be goofing off <laughs> or out in the, at, at the beach, then that's, you know, you're going to have that issue anywhere, you, or mostly right. anywhere. Right. But uh, if you're feeling like you're truly not using what, what are your best skills, and if you're truly, you know, especially at a young age, just hating what you're doing, um, then 
can start looking around these days boy there it is so easy to look around on LinkedIn um, a variety of web pages and see what jobs are open but also see what kind of um, careers are out there right. and and also broaden your mind about what a career can be uh, in a certain field. Uh, you know, speaking specifically in the science and technology field, y yes, there are plenty of jobs where you can be basically very, very confined, if you will, and very cerebral right. <laughs> and do that all day. But and, and if you like that, that's great. But if you don't, realize that there are all sorts of positions. There are sales positions, as you know. There are marketing positions. There are training positions. There are so many different types of positions, I'd say, in any given career field that open up your mind and also reach out to people around you you may not know anyone in those in other fields per se but they probably know somebody mm -hmm. and just take responsibility for your own happiness in that regard I love it. You've said so many great things. Is one, identify where you work well, what things you like to do, and then align yourself to roles that really allow you to embrace things that you do well in, in environments. And like you said, in STEM degrees and STEM careers, you can just about do anything from PR to marketing to training to sales to engineering to product development. It really is an awesome spectrum. And getting that critical foundation of analytical thinking and really positioning yourself so let's fast forward. So you you got into the uh, the computer. You started as a system engineer. Tell us a little bit about your journey, how you evolved to where you are today. Oh, great question. It's been uh, it's been a substantial journey, and I've enjoyed most pieces of it, most parts of it, and those parts that I really didn't enjoy. I'm thankful that I learned from. I've done. I like a variety of kinds of activities, not only in my professional life, but also personal life. And that has led me to do a lot of different things in my career, such as uh, I have been a trainer. I've been also a bug fixer, for lack of a better word. Uh, actually, when I was doing that, I... I was extremely happy. I'm a great troubleshooter and analytical person. Right. So just for so, clarity, for clarity, you're not out killing bees or getting wasps. <laughs> you're actually code, right? Uh, development code. You're finding bugs in the code uh, that run things. <laughs> Thank you, just JJ. For, for yeah. some of us, that's natural, but just for clarification. <laughs> yes, that's a very good point. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Yes, and that's that's something that takes a lot of detailed focus and very analytical and very technical. I've enjoyed that. I've also managed support groups as well, uh, technical support. So when customers have issues with someone's software, um, usually this was enterprise software, they would call either myself or uh, one of the people who have worked for me uh, in that capacity. Um, currently, I well, for the last 12 years, I've worked uh, for for uh, in the storage industry. Uh, and usually, when I say storage, in the past, I've really had difficult time helping people understand just what that is. That that yeah. people who weren't in that industry, and now with the cloud. <laughs> All I have to say is I'm in the cloud storage business, and bingo, they they understand that immediately. So it's been such a, an easier task to to let them know what I do. But it, within that role, I'm I'm a, I'm involved in consulting services, i.e., making sure that we understand customers' needs and their both business needs and technical needs and that we're helping them with that from a from a services standpoint that's awesome. It sounds like your career journey has been wide and had depth and you've popped out and gone into other uh, 
areas. It's pretty exciting. I really have to say this is uh, this is a great interview and really getting to showcase a woman that has taken advantage of all the opportunities that are available. So let's talk a little bit about, um, let's talk about mentors for a few minutes and I'd love to close on social media. So can you talk a little bit how mentors have played in your life and definitely in your career trajectory? Yes. I'm sure that typically one at this point says, oh, I had all these women mentors. However, truly my biggest mentor was my father growing up. And the reason I say that is because he was so encouraging of me to be independent and to follow my passion. And there was just nothing that I felt that was off limits for me to do in my life because of him. I, when I was growing up, I was an athlete and I really, it was a while before I realized that I couldn't be a pitcher for the Yankees or something like that <laughs> because right. that just shows how, how little restriction mm -hmm. that I felt. And so he was a big mentor. Um, my, my husband is also a mentor. Other than that, I find my mentors from people like you, I hope I don't embarrass you, but people like you, JJ, as well as others that I've met, uh, especially here recently, in, uh, from social media, actually, uh, initially, and people I've met and I'm in groups with different organizations or different charitable groups. They are my mentors. They're my peers and my mentors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found that a lot of women, as they move up uh, or, or move out, you know, move into different roles, it might not always be straight up. It might be into a role they desire that they have to leverage people, especially as they progress in their career, to get that recommendation, to make that connection, or to help pave the way. Uh, sometimes we cannot do it alone. Yes, that's very true, very true. In fact, if you try doing everything alone, it's not only lonely, but you're not going to do it as well as if you, um, if you were conferring with people and, and getting other people's ideas and other people's examples. Right, that makes sense. Well, that's great to hear. And so now how social media, the spin on social media, it seems to be everywhere. Is this part of your daily activities? Well, it certainly is. It is, it, it's part of my daily activity, both professionally and personally. I, the company I work for has a very big social media presence. Mm -hmm. We are trained on how to use social media. And there are times when I learn sometimes more about what's happening in our company mm -hmm. and also our, more importantly, our customers companies yeah. through social media, whether it's uh, Facebook or LinkedIn or any number of other social media outlets. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, personally, I really enjoy it because I, while I work very hard, mm -hmm. I also play hard. Yeah. And I have a number of people who enjoy seeing what I've been playing at here <laughs> lately. That's great. And so to round out uh, your day when you're not working in the cloud on storage, uh, what do you do for fun? Oh, well, number one, I enjoy being with my husband and yeah. we, uh, we have a lot of fun together. I love hiking. I'm an avid hiker. I belong to a hiking club and um, I try to do 10 miles, a 10 mile hike on the weekends. Um, yesterday I did a, a beautiful 10 mile hike uh, with 30 other people that, awesome. that also love hiking. So um, I adore that. I also, a couple of years ago, started doing Zumba. And with my love of music, especially very high energy <laughs> music, I just love Zumba because it's a combination of, of the athletic part of me and the musical part of me. Right. And I, I got a license to teach Zumba. I haven't quite done that yet, but that is one of my next personal goals. Oh, that's awesome. And as you likely, somebody's calling you to get back to work. So uh, we definitely want to close this up, but I was just hoping that you could share 
a lesson learned, maybe an obstacle you've overcome or something, because these journeys are not easy. These careers are challenging. They're very time consuming. So just as you're closing up here, is there a lesson that you'd like to share or an obstacle you've overcome or something that can kind of people take away as a nugget? Well, the my lesson learned uh, was pretty rough one. Uh, not to get too personal, but people along the way in my career had told me, Karen, you need to take a break or you need to not work so many hours or whatever. Uh, don't be quite so intense. And I thought, well, whatever, you know. Um, I'm going to work as hard as I want. And a few years ago, that really, frankly, took a toll on me. And I needed to just completely regroup because I, I wasn't myself. I wasn't my best being. And I did regroup, got some rest, and also got into a position with my same company, actually, in a role that allowed me to have a little bit more balance for my personality type. And I'd say listen to your body and listen to your mind and have have a balance in your life. Even when you don't think you need it, still have a balance. As they say, work hard, play hard. And that is definitely my motto these days. Well, Karen, on that note, what a great Few, few minutes we were able to spend with you to really get an idea of where you've come from, how you've traveled through your career, and where you are now. And it really sounds like you've learned lessons along the way, you've tried new things, you've taken risks, and you're at a point now where you seem extremely happy in your choices and you have balance between work and home and your personal life. So we're really excited that you took the time to share with us, Karen. We really appreciate it. And if people want to find you, how do they contact you? You can contact me at LinkedIn. I'm Karen San Karen D. Sands. And you can also contact me on, on Facebook or um, on Gmail, Karen Sands at gmail.com. Awesome. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for another great Women in STEM interview. This was truly a treat, and we are so glad you took the time to spend with us. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, JJ. It's always a pleasure. Thank you.